Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Today we're going to have a show on calf diphtheria. Not the little baby calf diphtheria, but we're going to talk about big calf diphtheria that we see in the feedlot in some of our Midwest feed yards. Cattle from 21 to 40 days on feed. Should be an interesting show full of great information. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks and welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine where I serve as the Jones Professor of Production Medicine and Epidemiology and today I want to talk a little bit about calf diphtheria. And when we talk about diphtheria, generally speaking, it has always been when we talk about baby calves that are on bottles or, or bucket calves, the things that they'll get a, a calf diphtheria. And, and what I want to talk about is more of a diphtheria that we're seeing in adult cattle, whether it's uh, feedlot cattle that we've seen some of these cases, or we've even had a case with it with mama cows being supplemented distiller's grains. What we want to talk first about is let's kind of set up the, the scenario of the respiratory disease and respiratory tract of the animal. So we start out at the nostrils and then as you go through the nostrils you go to, to the pharynx, which the pharynx is the part of the respiratory tract that is shared both with the digestive system and the, the respiratory tract. So it's where we swallow and breathe. Then you go to the larynx, and the larynx is the voice box, or it is the moo, or the squeal, or the scream, or whatever. We then go to the trachea, and then once we get past the trachea, from the trachea down, it is considered the lower respiratory tract. So we go to the bronchioles, to the bronchi, to the bronchioles, to the alveoli, okay? And that's when you get the lungs and, and things to that nature as we, we increase this this area of the respiratory tract. So the upper respiratory tract is from the trachea to the external or to the nose and the lower respiratory tract is from the end of the trachea and, and the, to the bronchi, to the bronchioles and the, the lungs in general. So why is that important? Well the reason why that's important is because depending on if you have an animal that's having respiratory distress, depending on when you hear the noise, like if I hear an animal grunt during the expiration, if I hear a noise during expiration, I know that the disease is in the lower respiratory tract or in the bronchioles or in the lungs or the alveoli. If I hear a noise such as a <gasps> as an animal's breathing in or during inspiration, I know then that the problem the animal has is in the upper respiratory tract. So if you hear it, when they're inspiring or when they're taking a breath in, that means that the disease or the, the injury or the, the whatever the obstruction is in the upper respiratory tract. If I hear it on 
expiration, like an AIP heifer, when they kind of uh, uh, grunt to get that noise to, to exhale, or they're having trouble with, with expiration, breathing out, we know that the problem then is in the lower respiratory disease tract. So important for you to know. When we uh, are gonna come back, we're gonna talk about calf diphtheria. And the one thing I want you to know is calf diphtheria occurs in the larynx. So diphtheria occurs in that opening um, from, from the nose to the nasal passages to the, to the larynx. It is the voice box of the cow. And when we have some sort of, of irritant that allows a bacterial culture to set up, we can wind up with uh, a disease that we call calf diphtheria. Remember to always work with your local veterinarian. We're going to take a break and when we come back to Doc Talk, we're going to get into what causes diphtheria and the clinical signs that are associated with that disease in your cattle. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Welcome to our Cattle First Tip as sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medic. At Medica, and today we're going to talk about pin floor conditions. Now, when I think about pin floor conditions in confinement, I'm thinking about one of two things. I'm thinking about too muddy or too hot. And specifically, when we talk about mud, we want to be able to control mud. We want to give cattle, we may not be able to control rain and control all the mud, but through building mounds and through making proper ways for water to escape the pins, we can make sure that these pins drain well and we can make sure that cattle have a dry place to lay down and that they don't have to wade through mud to get to the feed bunk or the water tank or the place that they're gonna bed. When it's 97 degrees outside, the pin floor is 137 degrees. So providing some sort of, of bedding, which is straw, even when pin floors are too hot, can provide comfort for calves to lay down and give them a cooler spot. We don't want pins too muddy. We don't want the pin floors too hot. This is your Cattle First Tip. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care. Our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Parasites will lose you more money than any other disease out there besides infertility. So, you know, parasites is something that we have to control, and that's what VetGun does for us. It's tough out there on a the ranch, but with the ease of the vet gun, it's a one-man operation. And whenever you can get one thing to work out great throughout that day, it just makes my life a little easier. This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. We're talking about diphtheria in calves or cattle. And diphtheria is, as I mentioned before, is an infectious infection that occurs in the larynx or the voice box of the cow. The bacteria that causes calf diphtheria is called Fusobacterium necrophorum. And if you've heard that before as a rancher or a feedlot owner or a veterinarian, you know that Fusobacterium causes multiple diseases in the bovine. Fusobacterium not only causes diphtheria, but it also is the bacteria that is associated with liver abscesses in cattle, and it is also the number one pathogen and associated with foot rot. So when we hear Fusobacterium necrophorum, we're thinking foot rot, liver abscess, and calf diphtheria. And generally speaking, diphtheria occurs a lot less often than what we see foot rot and, and, and liver abscesses. 
Fusobacterium is around in the environment, in, in dirt, in soil types. It's, it's common in, in feedlot paddocks. It's common in pastures, around ponds, uh, different things to that nature. When we have a problem with, with Fusobacterium, usually there's some sort of insult of injury to an epithelial tissue and then we wind up having the subsequent infection with the bacteria setting up. In foot rot in cases, you know, whenever we have muddy conditions and we get soft hooves and we get the soft skin between the toes and then the cattle that dries out and the cattle are standing in the mud bogs and then they walk up to where it's dry and they, they, they step on an old uh, cow track, that will cause a, a a, an irritation between the toes, which opens up that skin to allow Fusobacterium to then colonize or cause a lesion like we see in foot rot, okay? So when we have calves that are calf diphtheria, we also have some irritants that I think are proposed that we're seeing with the feeding of some of our high moisture corn silage and, and um, distiller's grains, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So what does a calf with diphtheria present? A calf that we have seen, calves with diphtheria, generally present about 40 to 60 days on feed after weaning, and, and they, will, they will not be losing weight, but will start to hear an inspiratory type noise. So we'll start to hear that <gasps> as they're breathing in, indicating that there is a narrowing of that larynx. For us, laryngitis means we can't talk, okay? I don't know if a cow can't moo, but I know that a cow has difficulty breathing quietly when we have the calf um, with the laryngitis. So the, on the larynx, you can see right here is a picture of a normal larynx and, and one that does not have any type of laryngitis. And then when we do get the fusobacterium to set up with diphtheria, here's an endoscopy picture of a calf that has uh, laryngitis or has calf diphtheria. You can see the swelling and the folds of the larynx, and you can see where that animal has a decreased amount of opportunity to be able to take a breath in um, and, and, and really function normally. So when we come back, we'll show a little bit more about some of the severity of the signs, and we'll get into some of the things we can do to treat these animals after these messages. Your investment in the beef checkoff is opening new doors for beef. Today and tomorrow, our commitment to long-term planning helps ensure your profitability from one generation to the next. Hello, this is uh, Caleb Plyler, Plyler and Son Charlays. This is my son, Hook, and my wife, Brianna. And we operate a uh, purebred Charlay operation in Hope, Arkansas. You know, in the uh, business that we're in, the beef checkoff dollars are very important to us. A lot of that money is to educate people just like kids uh, that's in Huck's class, the importance of eating beef. You know, it's a high protein product that uh, it's a very important uh, part of our diet. Sometimes we get this uh, bad rap as uh, uh, beef is not, uh, you know, what we really need to be uh, doing from a dietary standpoint. But, uh, you know, being able to get to the kids and let them know that, you know, beef, it is what needs to be for dinner. You know, one of the, the bigger things with our family is uh, getting to go out and show off some of our cattle. Huck, he gets to show uh, a lot of heifers. Uh. A lot of what we do trying to uh, get him into showing is the fact that it's teaching him discipline, respect for the animals, and it's going to continue to uh, give him lifelong skills throughout his life. But I think it's very important that, uh, you know, the next generation understands how important uh, the beef industry is. Just like Huck here, we plan on him one day operating this farm. And, uh, you know, if, if we can do that, we're doing what we need to. Because, you know, this country is uh, founded upon people that, you know, have family traditions and, and do a really good job of keeping those traditions going. Huck, one day, what kind of cows do you want to grow up to have, you think? Charlays. Charlays, all right. You know, uh, if the beef checkoff dollars are going to really good causes and really promoting beef, then uh, the consumers are going to want to want to buy more beef, and, and that uh, leads for us making more money in the end and uh, 
and it really helps the quality of people's cow herds because we're able to enhance our genetics even more. You spent countless hours building a strong operation. But when it comes to trichomoniasis, the odds are stacked against you. It takes just one infected bull to take down the whole herd. Damage could include open cows, lost pregnancies, and lost profits. The good news is with TrickCard, a herd doesn't have to feel like a house of cards. When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because vet gun now has a one-two punch with two vet cap insecticides. New AIM A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM L for effective in-season control. Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage horn fly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM L and new AIM A abamectin vet caps from AgriLabs. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State University where I serve as the Jones Professor of Production Medicine and Epidemiology. And I just wanna say the thank you for watching Doc Talk. Thank you. We've been down at Arkansas Cattlemen's, uh, Montana Veterinary Meetings, different places, different venues. And it's so humbling when someone comes up and say, hey, uh, I watch Doc Talk. So please come up and say hi, introduce yourself. I like to understand about your operation and things that you're going through. And if you want to check us out on Facebook, you can find out where we'll be within the United States or maybe even beyond. But anyway, with cap di calf diphtheria, cat diphtheria would have to be somebody else's topic, but with calf diphtheria, what we'll see are these nine weight calves, 40 to 60 days on feed. And again, here's a normal larynx. You can see the, the nice opening where air would flow back and forth. There on the bottom is the epiglottis. Okay, and, and that is what shuts when you swallow, covers your trachea so that the food goes up over the trachea and goes down the esophagus. Now here is an, as we had some calves that presented with Fusobacterium uh, diphtheria, and here's what their endoscope looked like. You can see this big fold of the larynx folded in. You can see the, the culture of the Fusobacteria here in the middle of this lesion, and you can see where there's not a very big window where those calves can, can take in air. One thing I have learned, and here's some video, these calves look normal. The calves that, that and, and if we treat them early enough, they do respond. But one thing I have observed is that wild cattle with diphtheria don't get along very well because of their excitability, because of their ability to increase the amount of ventilation needed because they're expending energy, that these cattle can succumb to diphtheria a little bit quicker. Your docile cattle have a little bit better time with it. Okay, so to get a proper diagnosis, you're gonna find them, you're gonna see that they're breathing, they're making noise on inspiration. We're gonna take those calves to the chute. The thing that is important about whether it's a hard breather or a calf with tracheal edema or a calf that's with diphtheria is that we don't catch their head in the chute before we give them their, their uh, treatments. If we think about it, when we take a look at a normal trachea that's here on the left, you can see the amount of, of space that there is for airflow. If you look at one here that's a hard breather in the middle, or one that would have calf diphtheria that has a narrowed or lessened uh, air intake potential, you will see that this is an animal that is having difficulty moving air in and out. Now, use a scissor, a scissor catch front head gate on a chute and catch this animal, we will actually see cam cattle suffocate very quickly because they are already have impeded airflow in their trachea. We put just a little bit of pressure on that trachea with the bottom of that head gate and we can occlude their breath immediately. So when those calves are coming in the chute, we want you to work with your local veterinarian on a therapy. Usually most of the things that are good against bovine respiratory disease are good against calf diphtheria. We want to make sure that you draw that up prior to the calf coming into the chute, 
The calf comes into the chute, we catch it with the sides, and we're going to administer the antibiotic. A lot of times, you know, we feed Tylen for liver abscesses, so, so antibiotics like Zuprevo, Zactran, Draxin, um, Mycotil are all macrolides that, that can treat animals very effectively for um, calf diphtheria or for respiratory disease. You need to make sure you work with your veterinarian and make sure that it's either labeled for the respiratory disease or make sure that the veterinarian can write you an extra label use of an antibiotic. We're going to take a break and we come back we'll talk about what causes these and how we might be able to prevent diphtheria in the future. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because vet gun now has a one-two punch with two vet cap insecticides. New AIM A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM L for effective in-season control. Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage horn fly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM L and new AIM A abamectin vet caps from AgriLabs. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us today to talk about diphtheria. Now, I talked a little bit about what I thought was causing diphtheria. And I don't know for sure, but in the work that we've done at PAC and, and with different feedlots around the United States, we tend to see an increase in calf diphtheria in feed yards that are feeding lots of high moisture diet in, ingredients. And, and that would be yards that are feeding silage, high moisture corn, and distiller's grains that are all wet feeds, which around the Midwest where there are ethanol plants, there's plenty of it. And, and so what got us thinking about this is because we don't see calf diphtheria in our, in our steam flake grain, uh, hay roughage diet type cattle and, and, or ground corn feed yards. So when we're seeing these high moisture feeds come in, and what we started doing was taking a look at the pH of these feeds. And when you start looking at the pH of high moisture corn coming out of the pit, uh, silage coming out of the pit and distillers after after it's gone through fermentation at the ethanol plant, these will have a pH that run anywhere from 3.5 to 4.0. Very very uh, acidic. And I for I, not that I would know, but I just googled something that would have a pH of 3.7, and wild turkey happens to have a, a pH of 3.7. So when we look at how much calves eat, about 20 pounds of dry matter, and the um, moisture content of some of these diets, these cattle can consume two and a half to three gallons of this liquid fraction while eating their normal diet of a pH of 3.5 to 4.0, which can cause the irritation on the back of the throat. I actually had a producer come up to me and said he was having diphtheria in his cow herd. And I asked him, I said, well, do you live close to an ethanol plant? And he said, well, yeah, by gosh, I do. Well, go to find out he was supplementing these cows a lot of distillers grains and you get some of those boss cows consuming more than the others and it can lead to some issues get that irritation in the pharynx and the larynx allow that fusobacterium to set up and and then we see the diphtherias okay so just a word to the wise if you're feeding these high moisture feeds watch out for for diphtheria cases and 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 be prepared to treat them now how do they resolve? If we catch a calf early in the disease process, so if you hear a calf that's starting to wheeze, bring them in and treat them 
per your veterinarian's directions. Because what we have seen is that if we wait too long to where we have a change in the anatomy because of the swelling, you saw how that this, uh, if you look at this larynx, you can see how this folds in. Once we get the scar tissue built up, it takes a long time for that to, to dissolve, to resolve and go away, if it does at all. So the key to treating is to make sure that we give these calves treatment, get them in right away, treat them with, with a macrolide or with a respiratory disease drug, and, and we should have great success. Wrap up, diphtheria is, is seen in yards that are feeding high moisture grain with distillers and silage. We see it about 21 to 40 days on feed. It's very responsive if treated early. Don't catch their head because they can suffocate. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know what we do at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I appreciate you watching today. I'm Dr. Dan, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.